doesn't uh-huh. have. It's the second thing that gets you. <laughs> We're recording, by the way. I told you there'd be a ding. That was your cue. That the, I thought I had more of a countdown. No, there was no more of a countdown. It was just a ding and a ding. So, yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Technophiles Podcast, episode 11. Uh, I was trying to think of all the episodes we've we've done. We've been on the air longer than other TV shows. And I want to say the Chevy Chase talk show. We've done more episodes. Chevy Chase had a talk show? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's okay. No one else knew either. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. Good for Clark. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, Magic Johnson had a talk show. That didn't do well either. You know they're bringing back Ricky Lake, or they brought her back? Yeah. You excited? No. I want Jenny Jones back. Jenny Jones is off doing other things. Remember, we, we did this. We looked on, on Wikipedia and then Googled her and see what she was doing. I know, but I miss Jenny Jones. I miss Donahue and Sally Jesse Raphael with the big freaking glasses. And I, like I said, do you think they're all just sitting at a, like a power brunch, just wondering what topics they can cover? Yeah, Jenny Jones, what do you got? Uh, baby mama strippers. drama. Strippers. Yeah, strippers. Everything with Jenny Jones was strippers. It was, help me, my daughter wants to be a stripper. Help me, my mom's a strip me. stripper. Help me. <laughs> help my mom strip me? <laughs> Help me, my best think, friend wants to be a stripper. I think that goes into Jerry Springer. Every Jerry Jenny Jones show ended in the word stripper. <laughs> like, it was just different scenarios of people becoming strippers, different family members that didn't want other family members to be strippers. She was like, oh, okay. And what was Sally Jesse Raphael's specialty? She tried to be, like, actually caring and, like, semi-political, like Donahue, but it just came across as easy. So if Sally Jesse Raphael and Phil Donahue had a baby... It would take over news broadcasting. It'd be like the new Walter Cronkite. I don't know about that, but I think it'd definitely be fun to watch. Because I don't know what Phil was into. Like Phil Donahue was towards the tail end when I was growing up. I really wouldn't. You know, my parents weren't watching him. They were pretty much stuck on Oprah. Without my glasses, Phil Donahue and Leslie Nielsen always look the same. Fair enough. All right. So in this episode, we're going to talk about a few things, and then we're going to get to know the Techno Vanna White a lot better. Nobody cares. Oh, you have no idea how many people care. Last podcast, best one ever. So we're going to try and top that one Great. with this one. And it basically just comes down. That means you're going to ask me hard questions, and there's going to yep. be math involved. Nope. And I only got ten fingers. I still do nine nines on my fingers. Yeah, you're not a honey boo-boo's niece that has, like, the six finger, and like, oh, so blessed. Give us a high six, honey boo-boo child. That's going to screw her up doing math for the rest of her life. And when asked, she's going to just keep it. Just going to like play it off like nothing's new. Well, why wouldn't you? Chop that bitch off. No, why would you have like a finger abortion? Why do you need six thumbs? Why do you need two thumbs? You don't need two thumbs, but exactly. it'd be nice to have. For what? What can you do with an extra thumb that doesn't really probably bend over and do anything? It's like it's just a finger that's dying out there. You could whistle with two thumbs and still no, no. keep your other hands free. I went to Peddler's Village as a kid, and there was a guy selling watches with a six thumb and he held that bitch on that fake thumb and hold it out i didn't want to touch that watch i don't you don't want to touch it that's an extra finger it's so weird yeah it's weird but... i might it's coming from a guy who has four nipples that's fine it's covered up with a you shirt anybody ever has two penises yes can you just pee in like opposite directions Jonah? i would pee in opposite directions all the time i would be you know how the flame twirlers they have the fire i'd be a piss twirler i would just different colors with the circles you have to understand, the Hidden of White has had a weird couple of nights. First, she's talking about the conjoined twins. The Hensels. Abby and Brittany Hensel. Yeah. I remember them before they got famous, and they were just weird people on Discovery Hell. Before they had a reality show. Yeah, and she was talking how Lefty would probably hit Righty with the other hand just to shut him up. No, but I, I just think it'd be funny. <laughs> two heads, each hand just slapping the shit out of each other. I just think that would be great. And to see someone try and break it off. Like, hey. <laughs> just go into town. You knock it off. You knock it off. <laughs> you know what's happened. You know at one point they were sitting there like this and the one just slapped the shit out of the other one. No, that's the one thing. In one of the previews they said that's the first, when they were cutting something, that's the first time righty cut lefty. That's the first time they've ever seen the other one hurt the other. So it's like they go out of their way not to hurt the other. That's better than most normal people. Yeah, I go out of my way to hurt people. I know you do, because you have problems with the anger ladder. It's a different story. Altogether. Anyway, technology, what do we got this week? Well, it's been one year since Steve Jobs died. How do you feel? Oh, oh died. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say happy birthday. It doesn't really apply. Happy death day. 
What do you do to celebrate anniversaries of people's deaths? Buy iPhones. Really? That's what most people have done. I'm all right. You know, having any indifference, the man who pretty much changed music and technology and had a lot of impact on a lot of people's lives? Not for me. Really? Do you like Finding Nemo? Do you like Cars? Not anymore. <laughs> Do the 600th time of watching it in a weekend. No, I absolutely hate Cars. Because he ran most of Disney. He owned... Steve Jobs did not own Disney. Make a bet. Uh, he might own Pixar. No, no. He owned part of Disney. Not most of it. I, I want to say a vast majority of it, yes. I'll agree to disagree. Okay, what's on the line? I yeah. don't care enough really to bet. Okay, he owned Disney. Oh, darn, I was going to hope for Topless. No. Mondo Topless. No. So, yeah, so it's been a year, and uh, they've kind of launched a couple phones that, eh, eh. Again, Are they making the Steve Jobs, like, Memorial Edition? No. No. There's a Memorial Edition for everybody else's size. Yeah, but I think what they've done is they've fucked it up enough with iPhone 5, or Apple 5, for some people, with the iPhone 5 that um, Steve Jobs, if there was something wrong, he really wouldn't apologize for it. He'd just be like, we'll just fix it later. You know what I think is weird in people's eyes? So many places are supposedly haunted, right? And people see ghosts all the time. I don't know if anybody's ever seen, like, really famous ghosts. It's always, like, the grandmother or, like, their mother or some family. Nobody ever gets visited by the ghost of Michael Jackson. Or, like, the ghost of, you Who'd know... Who'd want to be visited no, by the ghost you know of Michael Jackson? Like, nobody's ever seen that. Like, How many kids are frightened to think of that? Frank Sinatra. I heard a noise the other day. I was home by myself. I turned on the lights. I opened the closet, and Frank Sinatra was standing in my closet. Like, nobody ever has celebrity. I don't think anybody would say anything because they don't want to keep it to themselves. I would tell everybody if Frank Sinatra showed up in my Why? Closet. Because they have people over your house all the time wanting to see Frank Sinatra. You never get any sleep. Frank wouldn't show up. Frank's a dick. Frank was a dick. You think that they go... I don't, I don't know. I just... And another thing that bothers me about ghosts, you'd never see cavemen ghosts. And you never see, like, hippies. No, but when people have ghost stories or hauntings, it's always like someone named Sarah or Mary, and she was a pioneer, and she died, or, you know, it was Mary Sue whose husband left her on her wedding night, and she fell. So, but no, like, there's only, it almost seems like ghosts are really from, like, certain eras. Nobody's ever like, I heard a noise, and I went in, and it was a long-haired hippie with a peace sign, tie-dyed shirt, standing in the kitchen. Like they're always like really old and day ghosts or relatives. So only like the Victorian era, only they get the good oh, stuff. Yeah, I, I think there must have been something happened at a certain time period where people just couldn't pass through, pass over. Because nobody ever really sees ghosts from outside their family or from like, <laughs> like an 80s ghost with the sweatshirt off one shoulder, like leg warmers, the big neon box. earrings with a boombox. Or like a Walkman. <laughs> no one ever sees a ghost walking around with a Walkman. You have a point. Come on. <laughs> you have a point. You don't really see any of those. No. I, I think it was like from maybe like the 40s. Maybe like everything pre-1940. They couldn't pass over. Then something happened in a shift in time from like the 40s or 50s where people could pass easier. I don't know. Maybe they had a new gatekeeper. That wasn't as stringent <laughs> on the list. He's like, ah, everybody can come over. Oh, let's come on in. Party. It's party up in here. <laughs> you guys in Victorian area? No, you guys dress too fucking funny. Get the fuck out. Yeah, so. All right, sorry, go ahead. Steve Jobs. Died. No, no. Steve Jobs died. Well, that's really just the news. You, you can't undo and redo. You can't come back from the dead. If anybody would have the technology to reanimate himself, you'd think it'd be him. Do you think he's dead or think he's in the future? No, no, he's dead. But do you think he found something before dead. he died that could make him come alive in the future? No. You don't think so? No, because he was very religious at the end. He was kind of accepting of his... Well, you can be religious and still believe in time travel. You know what, honey? I think we'll have to look into that. Did he find something that would help him time travel? I, do you smell it? I smell a new conspiracy. Steve Jobs is not dead. He in time the future. He went 88 miles per hour right into the future. <laughs> he had a Mr. Fusion. He DeLorean that bitch? He DeLorean it. Fair enough. All right, um... In our last podcast, we talked about uh, Foxconn. Those are the people that make the iPhone themselves. It's the, the Chinese right. contingency. Well, uh, apparently the iPhone 5 has been doing so well and it's gone, hey, yo-yo. He was trying to eat your noodles. That's I okay. I don't want my noodles. Well, I don't want him to eat them. Anyway, anyway yeah, um, 
they make the iPhone 5, they manufacture it, they do everything, but apparently the standards are so stringent upon them that they now have gone on strike because of poor living conditions, like they're starting to get angry over making the iPhone 5. Well, these are the same people that that crazy person said that they just jump out, they put nets down so that people can just jump out. Yep. Do you think if they jump out the window and they catch in the net that there's somebody down there that's like, all right, back to your desk, Steve? I don't think they call him Steve, <laughs> but, you know but I mean. I'm certain they probably be like, just come on down, break it down, all right, go back inside. Yeah, do you think they get a, a personal day? Do you think they get to go home for the day, or think, do you think they send would, them back in the what? I think that would kind of be like a personal day kind of thing, like, all right, you jumped out the window, we can tell you're having a bad day, take a day off, just... Okay, Please. so they're striking now because of poor working conditions. Yeah, like now they've finally gotten to the point where like, oh, now we're pissed off. What's so poor about them? I guess because they're living in these small little boxes and they have... They like it! Oh, no, that's Japanese. <laughs> and I don't hear the kids that make my sneakers complaining. And they're making less money than anybody else. Well, yeah, but that's also because they're getting hit not to talk. So let's see, we'll bring up the... Um, uh, let's see. Don't Google for stuff when you're doing a podcast. That's so annoying. Well, you have to get the right information. No, you, want to make you shit don't. Happen. We're not a credible news source. If Fox News doesn't have to fact check, we don't have to fact check in our living room. I'm glad you bring that up. Because you, you listen to Fox News as if it's gospel. I do. I, do no, I like a no spin zone. And it's all spin. We can also talk about that. But it's spinning the way that I like, For example, so it's okay. Topical, we can also talk about the new debates. Okay, so Foxconn people, they're protest they're striking, but they'll probably come back for a five cent raise. They'll be happy and fine. The iPhone five will still be processed. It was just newsworthy. Now, let's talk about the debates. And when we watched the debates and we went to uh, different channels, they all had that all those shitty graphic things mm -hmm. all over the place. And then CNN had the the dial a meter. They have that every year. Which was four years, which was kind of going <laughs> up and years. down, up yeah. and down, up and down. Now, the one thing I was disappointed, they didn't have a hologram. I would have loved to have had a hologram. I loved the one four years ago as a CNI where it was just a big screen. I think it was, it was Andrew Sapir or somebody. They would, they would just touch the screen and it would come up with all the different. Like, they was like John Madden moderating the debates. Like, there was just like. <laughs> yeah, they would come and touch the wall and be like. Mitt Romney did a Hail Mary and he's going to run over there. And then, like, it was. <laughs> I would love to see John Madden analyze a debate. I think that would be great. That would be funny. Lots of lots of diagrams on the on the thing. Him and uh, who used to do the the Monday Night Footballs with him or some Night Football? Pat Summerall. Oh. Get him and Pat Summerall back for the debate. Just one last time. <laughs> I see Boomer on there. And then Obama said he's going to fix the economy. What? <laughs> Look at the way I met Romney. What? <laughs> It's going back, 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 no, they should just let them do it over there for cheaper and not kind of bring the workforce into America. Why is that? Capitalism. <clears throat> if it's cheaper to produce a good somewhere in China and it gives us lower costs here in America, as Americans, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna be like, oh, well, they're shipping jobs overseas, but in the same aspect, we want that low price. You know, that's why people shop at Walmart. I mean, I shop at Walmart. I, I don't really care. But, I mean, Walmart is has a horrible reputation for their internal promotion of women, a lot of their purchasing practices, their financial practices, their importing. But, like, there's a lot of, of issues with the way Walmart does business, yet millions of Americans shop there. You know, I see yeah. the commercials where, you know, Walmart will price match. You got this at Giant for three forty nine, and you can get this at Walmart, who will price check or price match for like three twenty nine. So people are going for the lower prices. Now you could say on the flip side, well, if they put the jobs here in America, there'd be more money in the economy, and then people would have more money. But it it, it goes to you know the dollars will fly, the cost of living, you know, inflation, you know, higher minimum wage. I just think that if it's cheaper to do it overseas, then do it overseas. I am a capitalist. I you know, I think we need to read. No, I'm not greedy. If I can pay $5 for something or pay $2 for the same item, I'm going to pay $2 for the same item Fair because enough. that leaves me another $3. So I have $5. Right? I can go to Walmart and buy 
something for two dollars and then I have that other three dollars left that I can go to Joanne Fabrics and buy something with so I'm giving money to Joanne's and creating jobs and I'm giving money to Walmart and creating jobs so when there's more money to have when prices are lower there's more money to spread across the board as opposed to just going to Macy's and giving them my five dollars okay now back to the debates and everything that goes back and forth in the information age that we are in technology is everywhere facts can be checked at all times why is it neither side can have the appropriate facts of the same topic Give me an example. Let's say, um, okay, now you can say um, job rates. Uh, unemployment rate dropped to 7.8%. Obama will promote, hey, it's been 7.8%, but yet Mitt Romney go, ah, uh, uh, it's not 7.8%. It's over here and over here. Like, they don't, for one topic, they both have two different views of one thing. So if you have an apple that's sitting on a desk, one side will go, that's an apple. The other side will go, that's not an apple. That's a, that's a bright orange. I mean, like, they have the information there. Right. And when they want to present a fact, whether it be um, his uh, budget plan, like Mitt Romney's budget plan, he wants to cut this amount of money, and Obama says, well, I have all the information right here, where is he getting his information from if it's not what he's given? Like, if Mitt Romney's not saying that, how's he getting his information? Like, how well, are they giving that there's up? there's different, I mean, you could have a poll, and I can have a poll. And you could poll people and go, which color do you like better, red or blue? And you come back and you tell me. You know, you pulled 100 people, 60 people like blue and 40 people like red. Well, I can pull another 100 people, and I'll be like 99 people like blue and one person like red. So you, it depends on where the information is coming from and where the polling and the data analysis is coming from. And you can also have one fact and skew it two different ways. If I came to you and I was like, I'm an apple salesman, right, and you're an orange salesman. I'm an apple salesman, and I do a poll, and I say, look, 50% of America wants apples. We need to buy apples. It is a, a fact that 50% of America wants apples. That's half the country that wants apples. So we need to get those apples out there and we need to get them into the public. Now you as an orange salesman have that same set of data and you come out you're like 50% of America wants apples. That is only half the population that wants apples. That's only half of them. What about the rest? What do they want? Why not offer them a choice? It's ridiculous to only put out apples when only 50% of America wants them. Let's offer them oranges. So it's the same fact. You mm -hmm. can just come at it from two different ways. Fair enough. So like we do. I like doing the political stuff, too, because it really shows off your smarts, because you're smart. Well, no, but I mean, it's just when you read between the lines, the, the fact can read, is the same underlying. It's just the spin that this side puts on because they want to promote apples. And this side will put on it because they want to promote oranges. And it's the same fact. You just have to, at that point, figure out you individually, do you want apples or do you want oranges? And you got to get rid of the, the spin on either side. Gotcha. Now, uh, moving on from the debates, we're going to talk about homemade 3D printers. Yeah. Do you know anything about them? Nope. I know I probably couldn't make one. To make one what? Make a printer? Yeah, no, no, you buy them. Oh, I thought you made it at home. No, 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 no. Is that no. a kit? No, it's not a kit. No, it's a, it's a device, it's a printer that creates a 3D object. No, enough with the 3D. No, 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 no. I can no, no, barely no. handle no, 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 3D. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is this is a printer that can make model Eiffel Towers or a wearable high heel shoe. Those are just random things. Plus, they can also manufacture. It prints out a shoe? How does it print out a fucking shoe? It's made out of material, and it cuts the material, like wears the material down, forms it, shapes it, and it's a high heel shoe. So I can make a shoe. I, I'm Not on that one, no. They so make printers. what does it print out on? It's, um, it's, it's a, a base material, whether it be like plastics. You can, make, you can form something out of a plastic. You get a block, and it shaves that block down to the form and shape you want. I want one. I know you do. And they can also make workable gears. So you can make things that move, and it prints out every little piece. Um, Jeff Dunham, the mannequin guy, the yeah. ventriloquist, he makes his puppets using a 3D printer. This is going to make our time machine creation so much cheaper if we can just print stuff out at home. Right. Didn't know we were making a time machine. Well, we are now. We Before, get... it was just a pipe dream. But now that I can print out the gears at home, it's going to be a reality. Because I'm not going to be here next Tuesday. I'm going to be somewhere else. Gonna be with Steve Jobs <laughs> I'm going to be on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the process involves a built-in laser that draws on the surface of a liquid plastic resin 
Uh, it's typically expensive, but a, a group of engineers and designers at MIT, those fuckers do everything. That's all they do. It's not the University of Maryland University College. <laughs> Uh, and they pioneered a cheaper way. So, yeah, like I said, they can... Uh, <laughs> there is a later school for kids who can't read good. <laughs> yeah, so... Oh, that's my phone. Make a beeping noise. But, yeah, see, if I show you a photo... See? That's amazing. Yeah, and that's all made from just a uh, plastic resin that, you know, laser cuts it away and does whatever. So now they're, are these going to eventually be affordable for individuals? They want to make them affordable. Like anything with Moore's Law, it's where you have a technology... And over time, it gets cheaper, smaller, more cost-effective for the consumer because technology gets better as time progresses. Right. Always find, like, that diode is now really expensive, but two weeks from now, they're going to find cheaper material right. that does better performance. So than are them. they these in the market right now? Yes, you can have a, a 3D printer at home. They're quite expensive, but, they're, they're very, but they are available. I think that's going to have a huge impact for small businesses and people that used to have to get prototypes and ideas, you know what I mean, and things made. You used to have to get a rep or go and, and talk to the manufacturer or some. So I think it's going to be a lot cheaper and a lot easier for people to go in and get patents and that sort of thing. True. Because yeah. you have an actual working prototype. Mm-hmm. With everything can work and they can make gears and I forget what they're also trying to make like... Um, Movable hands, things like that, but not like full on robotic right. hands, but just you know the molding of a hand. That's pretty neat. Yeah. I want one. Well, once you create that time machine and go into the future, you can get one and bring one back because probably going to be really cheap in the future. No, I'm actually going to go to. The, I'm going to take one from the future. First, I'm going to go to the future, get one. I don't believe in the whole rupture of the space time continuum. I don't think I'm going to end up in the alternate 1985. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the past and be like, behold. Look what I brought you. <laughs> So it's almost like the Star Trek continuum where, and the Voyage Home, where they had I to... I watch Star Trek. It's okay. I'll walk you through it. It's the same process. Voyage Home, they were, they were rescuing two giant whales, and they needed to create the glass material to hold the whales and the water on the ship. So Scotty, and I think it was Scotty and Chekhov, were, came up with a chemical compound. They had it because it's, it's readily available in the future, but now they're in the past. Because remember, they go back into town to save the whales. So what they're doing is they give it to the scientist to create, and their whole thinking was, how do we know he wasn't the guy to create it? It could be the same thing. You can go in the future, get that, come back, pass it off as yours. How do you know you weren't the one to invent it? No one will know. Completely unrelated, but I just start what you were talking about, like the animals and the glass. Maybe we start thinking about Noah's Ark. And I don't know why it took me 32 years to question this, but something just clicked. God said he wanted Noah to get two of every animal, like land, sea, and sky, right onto the boat. I don't know well, why. Why does he? Why does he need the ones from the fucking water? <laughs> Can't they just swim? Well, I think the there was a flood. That's yeah. their thing. Well, they that, like water. That is their thing. They do like water. Yes. <laughs> Maybe the flood was very violent, and it might have. No, 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 no. Just no. You no. were there. <laughs> no, I wasn't there, but. Whenever there's a flood, especially out in deep sea in like the St. Marianas, there's all kinds of sea life and everything. So how did he know about like different crustaceans living on the bottom? But yeah, that's a that's a bullshit story. Because why would he need two of the fish that can just swim? And why would he need two birds that can, can fly? No, because they need to eventually land and eat worms. So but, he had to get more than two worms. <laughs> that was probably a lot of worms that he got. So you think that the birds just only eat worms? And berries. Seagulls eat worms and berries. They don't possibly eat a fish. No. Finding Nemo. Those aren't seagulls. What were those, honey? Those. What are was the <laughs> what was the bird? Or is it? Oh, sorry, it's a pelican. Yeah, pelican. Oh. Close enough. With a big gaping neck. Yeah, that's a pelican. Pelicans eat fish, and that's fine. But and well, seagulls eat bread. Okay, fine. They eat bread, but my point is, he doesn't need to get on two swimmy things that can swim right next to the freaking boat. <laughs> so you think he's just sitting on the boat, and there's two dolphins in there because he needs two dolphins, and there's all the dolphins outside laughing at those two dolphins sitting in the ark, like ah 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 ah. The dolphins are like, "Fuck, we're in the boat." I do. <laughs> Fair enough. Welcome to the revelation, honey. Yeah. All right. Now this part of the show is getting to know who, I, who my son affectionately calls Lady. 
Because she has too personal. Huh? Nothing too personal. No, we're not going to get okay. personal. We're just going to. I'm going to throw out some questions or throw out some keywords, and we're going to get your take on them. And you're going to have to expand them. You can't just go. I don't fucking get it. Okay. Cable. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't understand how the picture gets from. Like a studio in my house. I don't understand it. What do you think <laughs> is in the TV? I don't really think there's tiny little people in there. But I just, and then some speak Spanish and some want to sell me stuff. But I just, I don't understand. I don't understand how if I don't go like this in front of the cable box, it doesn't mess up the waves. Well, the cable box. Because has in my head, cable, cable operates like Charlie at like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> like where it's the tiny little. And there's little Pixel. particles up here? Yes, and I don't understand why. One, I can't see them. And two, why I can't move them when I go like that. I don't I don't want to talk about cable. I don't no, understand no, no, electricity. No, no, no. I don't. That's another thing. Electricity. What don't you get? I don't get it. I don't understand how stuff just turns on. And and I don't understand how you can get it from a potato. And I I don't understand. I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to talk about this. It makes my head hurt. And it makes me chuckle. And you, my entire life, people have tried to explain electricity, and I don't understand it. I don't understand how it's everywhere and nowhere, and it turns on my lights, and how it, potatoes are involved. <laughs> potato, there's not a potato on the bottom of the house running the house, honey. <laughs> but they can I don't understand it. Yes, they can. It makes, they you can, know how scared that makes me when I eat potatoes? I'm going to get electrocuted. <laughs> because... I don't understand how it works. Everybody is just, oh, I'm going to blow up. Oh, I'm going to blow up. Ooh, it's delicious stuff. Oh, I didn't blow up. I didn't die today. No, if they're mashed, it's fine. You, I don't think you can make electricity from mashed potatoes. I don't, I don't know, honey. I, I don't know. I think it has to be like a raw potato. Possibly. It just, it, I, I don't understand how if I'm holding a potato and I walk on the carpet, I don't get electrocuted. Like, I don't understand that. Fair enough. <laughs> Next one. Gravity. <laughs> I don't understand that either. <laughs> what the, she has a theory <laughs> because the earth is spinning. If you were to jump up and down, why doesn't the earth knock off its gravitational no, orbit? Let me think. You said you try to Stop. push on the ground to push earth off its orbit. Okay, you know how in space yeah. and stuff... Like, the astronauts are out there, and yeah. they just, like, touch things, and it, like, goes continually forever. I don't understand how, if they don't push on how I'm so scared of Earth falling out of orbit and just falling into nothingness. I'm afraid of moon falling out of orbit and crashing into Earth. I can't look at the sky for more than 30 seconds without having a complete panic attack. Why and wanting to get inside that I think my dinky roof will protect me from the moon. <laughs> but... <laughs> I, I don't understand. I don't understand how you can go in space and, like, touch something and have it float forever. But, like, I'm supposed to believe that you can't, like, bop the Earth out of its orbit? There's nothing. <laughs> nothing. Okay, if you're out in space. If and, everybody on the northern hemisphere jumps at the same time, I don't understand how that's not going to knock it down. Knock it down to what? Like, the, the rest of the universe. Like, just down like in a space. Pool, like, a, like a cue ball. It's just going to go boom. Yeah. And just trips off Forever, of the Forever, and we fly off. And I don't understand how we don't if everybody jumps all at once. <laughs> so you just want a national jump day. <laughs> no, I absolutely do not. <laughs> I, I want to get a national should, jump I think day. I should ban jumping all together for that Basketball's reason. done. Football's done. Everything's done. There's no, no, no quick movements on Earth anymore. <laughs> not at the same time. Fat people should rule the world because they just slothfully move about. <laughs> It's amazing, honey. I just don't get it. I'm not a science person. I've never understood science. I just, I'm more, I'm very artistic. I am very creative. I'm good with foreign language. I'm that brain, that side of the brain, the history, foreign language, art brain, the science, logic, don't everybody jump at the same time, we're going to fall out of orbit, that side of the brain, I am not. That's not my thing. So let's go over this real quick. You don't know why, if you wave your hands, you don't disrupt the TV picture. Or radio signals. That I don't get. How it's just a voice. From a box. It's And it plugs in. But there's no... Anti I don't know how the voices go. I don't, I don't get it. So As far as I'm concerned, it's voodoo witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> so radios 
are voodoo witchcraft along with TVs, <laughs> and that there are little tiny people inside of them that know milliseconds before something will happen so they can change the picture around. And if you're going to change the channel, they know exactly the no, channel you're going to. No, I don't believe to. there's tiny little people on TV. Yes, you do. You have said Moving that Moving on. <laughs> Electricity. Don't get it. I you don't. don't know how you can hold a potato, move your feet across the floor, and not blow up. I don't understand how you don't bite into it and get electrocuted because I don't understand how the potato is involved in electricity. And if we need, the people talk about like energy and green and clean energy and how, well, why can't we just use potatoes? You don't think we're going to run out of potatoes? That's going to be a lot of potatoes. Yeah, but it's a lot, but that's a re potatoes are a renewable resource. But the voltage that they put out is really not that much. If you get a lot of fucking potatoes, it's. I just don't understand. I don't understand why nobody has. So like everybody's people, talking about like green energy. So you're saying the people at Orida. They're on a gold mine. Yeah. <laughs> <They're not. laughs> That's clean energy and green energy. <laughs> All right, and finally, gravity. Now, if everybody jumps, Earth is just going to push right the fuck off. I don't like to think about it. It gives me anxiety. <laughs> it does. So if I were to stand up and jump, how would you feel? You can jump all you want. If you and everybody else in the Northern Hemisphere did it at the same time, I'd get a little nervous. So if we had National Jump Day, like National Jump Rope Day, would that be the worst day of your life? No, because everybody's jumping at different... It's not like everybody all up at once and down. So it's a whole unison thing. It's <laughs> yeah. the whole mass yeah. going up, mass coming yes. down at the same yes. time. Because, yeah, but I mean, if you did it opposite, but, then the people underneath, like in China and stuff, that are jumping this way, it would balance it out. Okay, so you're just saying the people on the northern hemisphere, just above the equator, jump to fuck everybody on the south equator. <laughs> what would happen if the people below the equator heard what was going on above the equator and like, fuck that, we're going to jump back. So now you jump down, and you start the earth, I don't know how this would happen, but hypothetically in your world, the earth would start <laughs> moving down. The southern hemisphere people are like, fuck, we got to bounce it yeah, back into place. Yeah, a lot of pressure. Jump south back America. up and kind of go back up. But the problem with that is if you look at the landmass below the equator, really not that much. Yeah, you get the polar bears involved. Yeah. They like, jump, you little fuckers. <laughs> Save yourself and jump. Save yourself and jump. It's amazing. Your little mind is a wonder. My mind is a very magical place. Yes. Where of I think of pixie things dust and glitter. that people shouldn't ever. What's one ever... thing you've thought about that no one else has touched on? Other than deformities cross-mingling, or why we can't have sex with apes? Yes! <laughs> why can't we have sex with apes, hon? So, let's think about this logically for a second. Oh, I have. <clears throat> if you... Dogs... It's been scientifically proven, because I watched a documentary on Discovery Channel, that dogs are descendants from wolves. So while dogs are not wolves, they're still of that, like, canine species. So you can mix a terrier, and you can mix a pit bull, and you can mix a wolf, and you can mix a poodle. You know what I mean? You can breed them together, and it has an off-breed because they're of the same, like, species. Well, if we've descended from apes, and we're part of the homo species, not homo, but, like, homo erectus, homo sapien, homo apian, or whatever. So they're not homo. Whatever. <coughs> If we, you mean? if we have descended from monkeys, then that's our linkage is back to monkeys. So I don't understand why you can't have a monkey human hybrid. One word. Bigfoot. Yeah, but does that mean that somebody fucked the monkey or the monkey fucked the person? It all depends on who you want to And in to. order for a species to, have to survive, it needs a food source. It needs the ability to reproduce. So obviously there's more monkey fucks out there. But you know, no, I don't. I don't think Bigfoot is a is a hybrid. Um, but I don't know what. I don't know that I believe in Bigfoot. But, but do you understand what I'm saying? If 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 dogs can interbreed and they all come from wolves and the canine species, and we're all from the ape species, why don't we have ape humans? Because that would be the ultimate, I think, MMA fighter. And why would it be the ultimate MMA fighter? Because it's crazy. <laughs> That's how they find the MMA: <laughs> just a whirling dervish <laughs> of fingernails and teeth. No, but they're. Because we all know that gorillas, <laughs> they, they, love, they, they love two things, faces and cake. They do. There was this show. It was called Fatal Attractions, and it was people that had, like, these wild exotic animals. And there was at least, like, four episodes where the gorillas went crazy and killed the people and, like, ate their faces and then ate cake. 
So I don't think you should ever leave cake outside if you live in Africa or somewhere where there's monkeys. So it's if you're going to bring if, them, if, if you were to say, "I'm going to go to the zoo," don't bring cake. And I bring a cake to the monkeys. They're just going to go fuck ape shit. Pretty much. I, apparently, they love cake. They love cake. They love faces. And I just wouldn't risk it. Apparently, it sets off something. But again, nobody can answer my question why we can't interbreed a monkey with a person. I'm not volunteering. I'm just saying that I, to me, it doesn't make sense. If you can, if you have all these different breeds of dogs that stem from wolves, if we come from monkeys, why can't somebody impregnate so a monkey? So you're going. That's more. That's that's a, a point in the the religious camp that Adam and Eve, and that's how we started. Not. Descended from apes. No, I think we descended from apes. I just don't understand why somebody can't have sex with one. Not, th- I'm not. No, they can have sex with them if they want. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why you, you couldn't produce an ape person hybrid for fighting purposes or banana peeling? So what you're saying one. is you want to start a study to get apes and humans impregnated by each other to create a horde of chimp man MMA fighters. <laughs> yeah. But not crazy you ones want, like Planet of the Apes. Like that's what you want. You want you want people. Planet of the Apes. Apes. No, they were assholes. I want nice ape people. Did you ever see monkey moms? They're so sweet to their little monkey babies. They pick the little lights out of their head, and they they like come on, and they put them on their back, and they got their teeth all, and they just walk with their little monkey babies. They're such good. They're better than some of the human mothers I know. No one in particular. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't understand that, and I. What else don't I like? Yeah, what's a what's a big one that eats on your day? It eats on your brain every day. There's so many. I wake up and my brain just goes. Um, deformities. What about them? I think that one deformity per person. That's the max that you should have. I don't think you should have any more than one deformity. Because one deformity, it's like kitschy. Like, that's your thing. It's like, hey, she's got two heads. Like, that's her thing. Or, hey, he's got six fingers. But when you start combining them, it's just weird. Like, we were talking last night, the Hansel girls with two heads. It's like, hmm. Right? And you look at it, and you're like, that's kind of odd. That's kind of interesting. That's like her saying, you know, lefty-righty. And then you see a midget, and you're like, hey, he's a midget. That's his thing. But if you combine them, I had a two-headed midget. Like I said last night, it would look like a demon. Like or- <laughs> Or if they have scoliosis and they're attached at the head, they it looks look like, like a heart. heart. Yeah. yeah, but that's so freaky. You know, there's just, I think, one deformity. I think anything more than that, if they can test for it before birth, you probably shouldn't have that baby because I'm going to judge it when I look at it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not? If you saw a two-headed midget walking down the street. Would you, or you, ever, did you see that, that Indian <coughs> girl? She's got like 15 arms or whatever. No, no, eight. Yeah. Well, she has more than two. <laughs> That one, she kind of looks like an octopus. Now imagine that. Or the Indian goddess, whatever. Whatever. But imagine if she had like that deformity, and then she had the deformity of like the the wolf man that has the hair all over his face. Like that would be too. That's too many deformities. That's just too much for you. Just gonna handle it. Do you ever see people that don't have a torso? Yeah. That's one deformity though. Okay. But that's fine. <coughs> no, that's well. No, you said one deformity is okay. That's their thing. That's their niche. That's their thing. So no torso, that should be a okay in your book. Okay, but there's certain deformities that are just weird. Besides two, I have no problem with anybody like who a, has that, a deformity. No, that's like a B level deformity. That's like really serious, and that's not funny. So it's A level. Well, I, can't, I don't want to say because if anybody, my job. Um, no, it just. There's ones that are not, who, they don't impair. Who, who at your job has an A-level Nobody deformity. at my job has an A-level deformity. Well, then what's an A-level? Like, if you're saying half torso is B, that's pretty big. That's So maybe I should switch it. That's an A-level deformity. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's an A-level that's deformity. And it's not funny. I feel bad for those people. I don't want to be friends with them, but I feel bad for those people. And people like a sixth finger. That's, that's like, a, like a B or C level that's deformity. What I'd give like a you D. shouldn't mix B or C levels. They shouldn't just mingle. No. Fair enough. That's just gross, and it's weird. And nobody will be friends with you, because it's just too many. <laughs> Another thing. Um, left-hand turns. Why don't you do left-hand turns? Uh, they're not. There's no certainty. I don't like left-hand turns. I feel like, unless it's that green arrow, I don't like making a left-hand turn without the reassurance and the backing of the arrow. <laughs> That no one else is going to be coming. I uh, yeah, I don't. Even I don't if you're trust on an empty highway. Human beings. No, I need empty uh, highway. No, I'll make three rights. I'll make three rights <laughs> instead of making a left hand turn if there's no arrow. But there's 
anything highway, you can see oh. a mile. Somebody will come out of somewhere. I need that like I need the the reassurance and the confidence that the the left hand arrow gives me to tell me that it's okay and it's my turn and you can wait, sir, because <laughs> it's my turn to go. I, and I think we've learned a lot about you today. We're gonna save some for next time. Yeah, all right. Plus, I'm I'm hungry. I want apple jacks. Okay. Can you make me some? Yep. Great. So you want to say goodbye to the people? Yep. Why? <laughs> All right, everybody, that's uh, that's Set in the Falls podcast, episode 11, Getting to Know Lady. Hope you guys had fun. Uh, don't forget to uh, check out other, all of our other podcasts, our video reviews. Um, check out the webpage, technophiles.com. Uh, check out the YouTube page, all the videos that we have on here. Uh, if you'd like to suggest a comment, if you want to do, we can do an Ask a Lady section of the Technophiles podcast. So if you want to ask her a question or a comment or anything, just leave a comment below. Hope you guys had fun, and we'll see you guys real, real soon. Hopefully, we'll have a better week of news, because this week was kind of slow. So, uh, we'll get back to you later. Hope you had a fun time, and, oh, my Apple Jacks are here. All right, bye! <laughs>